from chapter six here. And the last thing we said was seemingly, if we're trying to get the Makiv of Rosh Hashanah, right, and that requires a tremendous bittul, we really should just blow the shofar of Rosh Hashanah itself, which, which the day of Rosh Hashanah and the shofar of Rosh Hashanah brings us this level called bittul ilah. And that, that itself should be sufficient and even the best way to capture this level of makif that we're gonna, it's going to sort of purify all of our sins and so forth going to New York. Why does the Tzemach Tzedek say we have to blow the shofar of Elul in order to achieve that bittul? And why is it necessary that the Elul shofar has to precede the Rosh Hashanah shofar and you need this, this preparation of the lower fear before the higher fear? And so we said in short that there's four levels on the ladder of reaching up to Hashem. And from the lower fear, right, you have to actually, you can't just jump to the higher fear. You have to go through the two stages of love. So we said the actual muscle of the Alter Rebbe is perfect in that sense because it, it, it shows you in subtleties the four levels of going from the lower fear to the higher fear and the love in between, right? So going out to the field to begin with, to see the king, that's the lower level of love. And when he receives you, that's the, I'm sorry, the first one was the lower level of fear. When he receives you with a nice countenance in the field, we said that's going to be the lower level of love, right? And the idea is that you're producing the love, that's why he's just receiving it, right? He's not showing you something of his own. The next level is he shows you a, a smiling, happy face, that's the idea of the higher love, and then finally, in Rosh Hashanah, you get to this level of the higher fear, with the shofar blast. And we said, you can only attain the higher fear if there's a mitzvah involved, right? Because since the higher fear is elevating you to a place which is beyond human touch, right? That you're meditating and dealing with a level of light which is beyond the creation entirely, the exaltedness of the king, like he, not how he is in the field, dressed down and minimized and contracted, but as he is in the palace, fully on display the, 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 the that level of godliness before creation therefore man cannot just climb up there being that we're limited so without having this rope thrown to us which is the rope of the mitzvah the shofar which is itself an object so to speak of god that comes from that level we can't reach it and therefore we require um the shofar in order to reach this level of higher fear um we still have the question however why, in other words, why is the uh, why is the why is it that you need the fear of Elul in order to arrive at that higher fear? Seemingly, you got your your Rosh Hashanah, you got your mitzvah. You should just like pop into it. And so he said, because the reality is that when it comes to fear, remember we left off yesterday. Even though the fear of Elul is the lower fear, and the fear of fear in Rosh Hashanah is the higher fear, right? Nonetheless. There is a certain quality in the fear of Elul over that of the fear of Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because we said now in chapter six, here three lines down, since the time of Rosh Hashanah, there's automatically, especially when you add the shofar, this sort of revelation of Hashem's kingdom. Therefore, then the the, the fear and the bitl that you that you attain on this day is what we say is not a chiddish. What's a chiddish? Remember from yesterday, David? A novelty. A novelty. Very good, right? So it's, there's, no, there's no like real novelty to it. Of course, you're, in other words, of course you're going to be nullified in such a scenario. Since kulo kame kulo chashi, since you're meditating and you're, you're, you're dealing with a light which is like beyond creation and it, it's completely beyond your senses and infinite, <laughs> And as we said yesterday, the kosher who come a yoser, who yoser kalo, anyone who's closer to Hashem is less and less in, a, in possession of their own feeling of self. So it's, it's, a, it's almost a natural thing. The more you, 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 you approach infinity, the less you experience your finite being. And so all of a sudden, what's the big deal? They all of a sudden, you, you, you're bit you don't experience your finite being. You've just approached infinity. Of course. So the fact that suddenly you're found in the chamber of the king, in the castle of the king, palace and so forth, it's, and, and that you're nullified in such a situation and you're like awestruck, that is not something to be so surprised about. And therefore, 
the bitl, even, even though it's, it, it's, it's a high level of self nullification because there's no novelty in it, it's not that impressive in a sense. In other words, it's, it's kind of a contradiction in terms. On one hand, what could be more impressive than being like sort of like Moshe Rabbeinu, right? You're, you're completely nullified. What's, you're not experiencing self. What's coming through you is entirely divine. You cannot reach a higher level of like lack of pre- self-presence. And yet we're saying because it's coming to you without really your work, right? In a certain sense, it's, it's because something was, was, was presented to you, which just nullified you. And it was if God would, would call you to the mountain and speak to you face to face, that would happen to you also, theoretically, right? So the point is not where, on one hand, it's the greatest level of bitzel, and yet we're saying it's not because there's no chiddish in it. That somehow the novelty of the bitzel creates a certain quality of it, which even though on one scale, qualitatively, it's much, much lower, then the novelty itself gives it a, a unique quality that the, that the higher bitzel does not have. And it gives an example, and this is where we left off yesterday. Chaim. Uh, the higher bitl, nonetheless, even though it doesn't have that quality, it's still higher. I mean, we have to like, how do we get like? It's it's what we're trying to show how it's not higher. So how do we get around it? Oftentimes in Hasidus, what we really say is the there's high and low, and the lower one is really higher than the higher one, right? In other words, there's a quality about being low, which is actually a higher quality than being high. And the best example of that is like what we call the purpose of the world is Hashem wants a dwelling place in the lowest world, Adira Batatoni, right? What, what is Hashem? Hashem created the higher world and He created the lower worlds. But His true desire is that He wants a dwelling place in the lower worlds, which shows you that it's it, that, that really God is after and God is therefore most united and linked up with the lower worlds, which even though they're lower and they maintain their status of being lower, the very fact that they're lower actually reaches something higher than the higher. Right? Because if the higher worlds was where it was at, Hashem would desire those. He doesn't desire those. He desires the lower ones. So therefore, it's it's this idea that what's lower really, me, what falls lower really comes from a higher source. We'll get more into it though. Um, so he starts to give an example. He starts to give an example. Guys, we're a little bit scattered over here. You want to have a seat, join us. You're trying to stay awake, I understand. All right. So he says, Dugma, this is an example of the Bito Shaba Atzibus. We left off here yesterday because it's a whole like conversation. This is what is the, what is the, what is Atzilus, first of all, right? There's four worlds. And of the four worlds, Atzilus is the highest of the four worlds. So there's Atzilus, Bri, Atzir, and Asiya. And what's unique about Atzilus that's completely different from the other three worlds that are below it. It has like a, 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 a qualitative difference that is incomparable to the worlds of Bria, Tzir, and Asiya. What is it? How would you describe that? Yeah? Is it infinite? I'm not going to say it's not infinite, but um, it, it, it's, it's not infinite in the way that we normally think about infinite because what's above Atzilus is called the Orein Sof, right? So that's really infinite. When Hashem makes Atzilus, the whole idea is called Olam HaAtzilus. It's called the world of Atzilus. Anything that's called a world means it has structure to it, which means in a certain sense, it is finite. For example, there's 10 spheros there, not nine, not 11. So you, now inside of each sphere, you might say that there's, there's something infinite going on, and I would agree with you. But in principle, it's a finite world, right? So what's the difference between it and the lower three? It, it's just kind of, I didn't mean to uh, dissuade you guys from answering by knocking off that one. <laughs> What's the difference between Atsilas and the lower three worlds? No, no concealment. No concealment. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's no concealment. That's good, yeah? Um, is it that uh, all the other three worlds are Yeshua and Atsilas is, uh, it's, it's like a Matsil, it's, yeah, it's emanated? Okay, so the other worlds... Are, are have a yesh quality to them, right? They're yesh, and the tzilus doesn't have a yesh quality. It's like the ayin, right? It has it has a quality of total nothingness. So it's very similar to what we're saying actually now about the yira ilah, right? It's like there's no feeling of self whatsoever in the world of tzilus. The answer I would give 
is both of those are correct, by the way. The answer I would give is that what is if you think about what Atzilus is, right? Even though we're saying it's a world, really it's godliness, in t- complete and utter godliness. There's no notion of creation or an other, like you were saying. There's no there's no feeling of separateness. There's there, it, there it's not something that that there's God over here and then God made something and that creation. And separate existence is called Atsilus. We call it Atsilus, which means the world of emanation, because it actually is him. It's just him as he presents himself in the form of a man, the supernal man. Whereas the worlds below Atsilus is now that Hashem has sort of made himself as this man. This man can now speak, and this man can now love <laughs> and fear and look and, and have an outstretched arm and a patience and a, right. So so he's now in a he's made himself into a form where he can now have a relationship with his world that he's going to make. And the world that he makes is already Bria, right? When I, so the world below Atsilus, Bria, is Mamish like a separate entity, at least the way Hashem made it feel and look, than Hashem. And Bria, Tzir, and Asiyah, they're all kind of in the same category. They are, they, they are the world that Hashem is working with. Whereas Atsilus, it's actually not the world Hashem is working with. It's Hashem as a entity of ten spheros. So Hashem like made himself into a, some kind of a definable entity. So it's not it's not something other than him. It's him as this man, right? So it's a completely different categorical concept what Atsilus is versus what the worlds are, the lower three worlds, because Hashem is not having a relationship with Atsilus. He is Atsilus. It's godliness itself. And that's why you're saying it's 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 um there's no concealment there, right? Because concealment means that you come a creation and now you think yourself to be a finite being that's that's, that's something other than God. Atzilus doesn't have that experience. Or that's why you're saying it's it's not yesh mi'ayin, right? Because yesh mi'ayin means it's something from nothing. It has this experience of self. And therefore, the bitul in Atzilus, how do the spheres of, of, of Atzilus feel, so to speak? They don't feel as though they are have their own identity at all because they don't. It's basically Hashem's mind. It's Hashem's love. Whereas when you go down to Bria, it's completely different. Now you have a created being who has his own love for Hashem. See the difference there? Yeah. You're starting to see it's like completely, completely revealed, so it's just completely nullified. There's no, there's no self. There's no... There, there's no self because Hashem did not create any independent identity. The creation is the next world after... Atsilus, right? So creation is when you're going to have something called here it is, like this exists independently and, and I'm now going to have a relationship with my creation. I feel one way about it, it feels one way about me. Before you get, to, he didn't make creation yet. So what is this ten spheres if it's not creation? It's him, right? In other words, God instead of being in an infinite form, God's like, you know what, I'm going to have a brain now and I'm going to have eyes and I'm going to, obviously we're talking about supernal spiritual levels of eyes and brain, but it's called the form of man, Adam Ha'elion, the higher man. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that he made that he is now having a relationship with. It is him looking through a brain, looking through eyes. So so of course there's no sense of self there because there's no other than God yet. It seems. Yeah, that's what we call it. the word. It seems means emanation. An emanation is like the sun's here and it's shining its rays. The rays are not something other than the sun. They are the sun. They are the extension of the sun itself. Uh-huh. The seems is a creation itself. Right? It's that's what I'm trying to say. It's specifically not a creation uh-huh. because the word creation means bria. That's the world that comes creation after it seems. Okay. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's an emanation. It's not. It's not a created thing. We call it a world only in that. It's it's it has ten spheros and like basically it's it but it's it's the word for world in Atsilus means something entirely different than it does in the lower three worlds okay. because those are a world as the as like as, as in, a, in a state of having been created where Atsilus is basically just Hashem in a form right so it goes along with all you guys are saying no concealment and no concept of something from nothing but the point is is that the, therefore the bittel there. Is absolute because there's nothing. There's nothing to nullify. It's not like there's a sense of self that has to then go away. There's, it's, it's just all. Every sphere is just imbued entirely with godliness, and therefore there's no chiddush to the fact that it is butl. In other words, what's the? Why would? How would it not be butl? There was never like a havamina, or I would have thought 
that there's something besides God here that has to then be nullified, right? It's just to begin with complete, complete and pure elokus. And um, yeah, and I love it. So in footnote 31, it's kind of like one of my little favorite pieces of Hasidus right here. He speaks about the muscle of the talking bird, right? Who has heard of the muscle of the talking bird? I know Levi has. Yeah. So what's the muscle of the talking bird? <coughs> Is that if you have a king and you want to give him a gift, right? And you're going to go searching through the whole kingdom to find the right, just the right gift to give the king. What, what, what are you going to come up to give him? Silver, gold, jewels. He has it all and more than you. Or you're not going to really like touch his heart with, with a gift of wealth. It's, it's, it's not, it's, you're not on the level to really honor the king with, with those things. So he says, you find and you give him a talking bird. Why a talking bird? Because it's like a novelty act. And it like makes the king laugh. It's like something that you can't find everywhere, right? It, like even the king doesn't like just have like a storehouse of talking birds. It's like a rare item. And the idea is, well, you might think to yourself, why would I give the king a talking bird? A bird, it hard, it's, its speech is not real speech. It's not actually having a conversation with him. Better I should give him a talking man. Talking wife. I'll talk, yeah, I'll give him a talking man, right? So I'll bring a man in. It'll talk to him. So much more sophisticated speech. For sure, that will make him happier. So, right? But no, he's got plenty of talking men. That's not that's not really doing it for the king. So, so you see that even though the speech of man is so much more sophisticated and like intelligent and it's actual speech, the speech of a bird is just, a, is just like a mockery of speech. But the fact that you're able to export something like the concept of speech into the animal kingdom, right? Even though it pales in comparison to the to the original. It's still more precious to the king than the, the most illustrious, you know, orator, because you've you. It's a chiddush. That's the point. Because it's a novelty, right? And when when when, you, when you're able to, and this is, and 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 the uh, analogy or the analog is when you're able to export godliness down into the lower realms, right? Like for example, lower fear or lower bittul, bittul ayesh. So even though bittul ayesh qualitatively is nothing compared to bit of Matthias, right? When you're like an Atsilus type of level, but since it's a, it's a complete wonder that you can have any sense of Bittu down in, so to speak, the animal kingdom. The fact that we're not just running after our passions 24 seven, but to actually stop and think and Elul, I'm gonna do Tshuva and like sort of re realign myself. So even though our Tshuva and our godly thoughts is like bird talk, in comparison to like true, you know, godly experience, nonetheless, the king loves it more than the actual angels praising him all day long because it's a novelty act, right? And it, and it, and it creates like a joy and a laughter from the king. So this is what he's saying here in Atsilus, yeah, if they're bitul as can be those pharaohs. They give Hashem no problems whatsoever. In fact, they're like complete perfect chariots to hold his mind and there's not a sense of self involved, but there's no chiddush in that. So he's not really after that. He doesn't say, I want a dwelling place in the Elyonim. He doesn't say like, I'm going to find my joy and my real essence is going to be experienced in those worlds. On the contrary, if it wasn't that those worlds eventually led to the lower worlds, he wouldn't have even created those worlds to begin with. They're just a means to an end to find this bird that maybe one day you can train to, to, to talk, right? Because that's such a wondrous chiddish, like a unique thing that it can almost never be. Find me a talking bird. It's rare. Is there even one talking bird in Sfat? Yes. Mamish gives you like a good old conversation. <laughs> None of this Polly wants a cracker thing, man. Give it, give it going. The, the real, the real stuff. Real there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway. So at Silas no chiddush. We came into about Silas mayor gili orin so because in at Silas it shines the orin so. And then he goes on. This gets this is in brackets because it's like a little technical. It says well derek zeb at Silas gufa. So if at Silas itself is already there's, there's no chiddush to the bittul, then in at Silas itself, right? Sha bittul she besvirus hachochma she bahu ikra bittul eno chiddush. Then what he's going to, he's going to kind of climb up the ladder here. Then the the sphere of chachma, which is sort of like the 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 essence of the whole world of Atzilus, right? Reishis chachma, the beginning, the 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 the, the, the original uh, sort of flow of of infinite divinity that's going to touch and enter into Atzilus in general. It all sort of collects itself in the first sphere of chachma. 
Certainly, that the level of bittul and chokhmah is completely off the charts, and there's no chiddush there. Of course, chokhmah vatzilus is bittul to Hashem. Because what is revealed in Chochmah is the experience of, quote, who levado ve'em zulaso. He is, there's him alone and there is no other. You know, let me explain what he's saying there. Each sphera has sort of a different um, characteristic and what we call koach, right? Because they're called the eser kochos, the 10 powers of the soul. So each, each power wields a different type of, you know, of, of, of personality and structure and organization. So Bina, for example, is that you have <laughs> comprehending something to break something down in its parts. Chesed, let's say, for example, is Hashem's ability to give. Gevura is, is his ability to contract and, and to take away. So each koach has like a unique ability that is Hashem is sort of like showing us and wielding his description of his different kochos. What is it that Chochma does? Right? What's the unique quality that Chochmah has? The first sphera and like the origin of the entire world of Batsil. What's the, is, 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 does it pride itself on understanding something? Does it pride itself on being able to give or to contract? No, it prides itself. It's in, it doesn't pride itself at all. That's the point. It has no pride. It has no sense of self. It's Indian is the experience of constantly feeling that he is alone and there is no other. Right? Chochmah, so, so if, if you ask Chochmah, what's up? You know, he's like, there is nothing but God. So he doesn't he doesn't have a sense of self. Its sense of self, its koach, is the constant state of awareness that, that there's, there's only one, that he's alone. There is no such thing as an other. And that's kind of like the fact that something can have that experience is already like the bridge in order to get other spheres to come out. Because as long as something is experiencing something, but what's his experience? It's experiencing that there is nothing else but God. But who's experiencing that there's nothing else but God? A thing. Chochmah, the power of what? Koach ma. So that becomes the transmitter. So now that there's even a thing to experience only God, now things can come out of that. And that's why it sort of leads into this hishtalshulus of other potential power. But it alone is full bitto. Its experience is their enod milvado. And if that's true regarding the bitto of Atzilus and higher yet of Chochmah, Ma Kol Shekein HaBitl De Keser. Then Keser, which is even the sphere above Chochmah, is even further, is, there's no Chiddush there, that everything that's going on there is in a complete state of nullity to Hashem. The, the description that's given to the sphere of Chochmah, right, in the Tukun Izor over there, he says that even though it is a, what's that? What'd you say? About, About Kesser. Kesser, yeah. It's regarding Kesser, it says even though that it is what's called an Ord Sach, which is an exceedingly refined light, right? It's like as, as, as translucent and, and bright as light can be. Nonetheless, it's considered black before, in other words, as dark and coarse as can be, before the Ilas Ha'ilos. In other words, before the cause of all causes. Right, so we after just describing how bitul chokhmah uh, uh, atzilus is, it has no state of self, and then how much more so the chokhmah atzilus, which is the origin of that. Nonetheless, even keser, right, which is beyond that in a, in a state of total bitul, we're saying that even though it's 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 considered as bright as bright can be, why would it be called black? Because compared to the orange sof which precedes it, right, it is completely humbled and humiliated into a state of nothing because. Because what is Kester, basically? It's the origin of Atzilus before it sort of comes out, right? The Kester of every world is like the impregnated version of those spheros as they are in their, in their, in their pre-revealed state. So ultimately, what Kester is, is a combination of finite spheros. And, even, and, and it's in the midst of the Orin Sof. It's about to be birthed out of the Orin Sof and become Atzilus. But while it's in there... So why is it called black? Because even though it's the most radiant thing that you could possibly imagine, even Atzilus is the most radiant thing, and Chochum Atzilus even more, Kester is impossibly radiant, and yet when it realizes its its position in, co in conjunction with where it's coming from, what's producing it, the Orient Sov, it's Ukamhu, it's like black, it's completely bitul. And that's what we're saying, that 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 the bitul there as well. It's like, of course you're going to be bitul. You're sitting inside the orange so even at, no, no matter how great you are and how radiant and splendid you are, you're not going to get high on yourself when you're in the middle of the orange so So the bitul there also is no chiddush. 
The pillars who come who shall kiss who be bitter, and the fact that we're saying it's black means it's in a state of bitter. Come on, Mari Shachor Sheinu Gavom and Neged Mari Levan. Just like black, when you put it on a white piece of paper, it doesn't show itself to be higher than the white. I don't know it's kind of like a optical illusion, but when you look at a page, it looks the black ink looks like it's like sunken in, right? And the white is it's like sort of sitting on the white. The white is so is is like popping up around it, almost like if you put like a like um. A, a mold inside of like dough or something, right? The dough like sort of pops up all around. It looks higher, and so he's saying that's why we call Kesser black because it has this like this 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 lowly. It doesn't it doesn't you know pronounce itself as high. Legabi orange social Kesser compared to the orange so which is above Kesser, which is called the cause of all causes. And again, that level of bittul, even though it's an awesome bittul, ain't zechidish. There's no there's no there's no novelty there. And why? Because it's in a it's in a situation of realizing its nullity before its source, which is the orange soap. Right? And so it goes. Atzilus and Chokhmah and Keser. Yes, they're all bittel, and they're infinitely le- higher levels of bittel than you are. It's like the talking man, right? But there's no Chiddush. Whereas the Yira and the bittel of Elul, Keshamelech <clears throat> when the king is in the field, when the king is in the field, you don't have the experience of him in the palace, which is his exaltedness in a level which is beyond creation. You have none of that. You have the experience of Bria, Yitzira, Asiya, which means that that level of godliness has already like, like condensed itself into a feeling of absolute independence, level after level after level, and you are the recipient of that independence. And you feel absolutely like you exist as something other than God, and you're having a relationship with Him. He's over there. You're over here, and you and 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 the question and, and on the contrary, you you even have questions as if He's really there. You have no like real proof in in, in, in a tangible way, but you for sure exist. Right? You can pinch yourself. There's there, you have, you're a hundred percent sure that you exist, and you're pretty sure that He exists. Right? That's the experience of creation. It's like ridiculous, but that's what the situation He put us into. Right, and so how much bitto can you get while well, he's maintaining that level of your own self awareness constantly because you're after Atsilas and you're after Bria and you're after Yitzir and you're in Asiya Gashmi and he's putting you there and maintaining you there, even if you're going to meditate all day long. How much are you going to really get out of that feeling of self? He's not really letting you out, right? So, this is the idea that the Melech is, not, is in the field where you don't experience his exaltedness. And even in this lowly situation where you're stuck with, with your depressing thoughts and your, your taivas and your, your ridiculous ideas about what you think you are, what you're going to become, and your like random like, like imagination all day long of what goes on in our little created minds, nonetheless, you run to shul, you come to the Hasidic class. You're the first one there. You got your pen and paper. You're making copies. You can't wait. You're trying to understand the Hasidus. What's a talking bird? You're in. In other words, you want to bit to yourself. You put the yoke on yourself. You see, I'm not going to be like kakola goyim. And you and you and you try at least. To, you're a bird, but you try to talk. Try to whistle. If that's not enough, you're going to go grab this horn and like a madman start blowing it because you want to arouse some kind of a fear to go along with this intense need to humble yourself and put the yoke on you. That's a chiddish. That's crazy. Who's doing this? What percentage of the human population is, is, is after this right now? You know? Right? And, that, and you blow the horn so that you're Kabbalah's soul should be even fuller than it would be without that horn and that inspiration of fear. So this bittel, Avshu bittel Yesu, even though it's like, like a pathetic type of bittel in a sense, it's a talking bird. It's not much of a conversationalist. It is glorious in the eyes of Hashem. It's precious in Hashem's eyes. In fact, he made the whole creation including Atzilus and Kesser and all Chochman and all the rest of it, just so he would put David over there, who's barely trying to stay awake and has to stand up in the class because he's like, that is a mamish amazing. Look at this yid, right? <laughs> and he's ready to have all the angels like serving you at your, at your every command because it's an impressive thing to be a goof and a behemoth and a bird and chattering around like you're pretending to talk. It's, it's wondrous. The Yesh Lomar, we can say, 
דאג ידי דאג ידי It's not that big of a deal when the bird just chirps. But all you day, a time look shall a melech mizesh yotim the cross of the Kabbal Pana through the pleasure of the king, right? That you're actually giving Hashem pleasure. That's the crazy thing. People say like, you know, I don't feel it. I'm diving, I don't feel it. I put on my tefillin, I don't feel it. I'm learning Torah, I don't feel it. Like, why am I doing this all for? So it's like, but Hashem is having amazing pleasure from you. Isn't that like enough? Like sometimes you want to serve your father, even though it's a tough, arduous task. You know, it makes him happy. And that's like enough. I mean, it's more than enough. It's incredible. I can make my father happy. Like I can pull out pleasure from him. Grumpy guy, whatever it is. Hashem is mamish delighted when you do the smallest amount of avodas Hashem. Which, and what's that called? Going out to the field to meet him. That's called doing the slightest amount of Avodah Hashem. It doesn't take much to go out to the field, right? You're not polishing pearls. You're just getting up off the sofa and like approaching him. And then once you get to the field, it's even more so. Right? That this joy is amplified in the fact that you see the joy of the king. Smiling at you, receiving your receiving your tshuva. In other words, it's 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 an amazing thing that you you can actually you can actually be aware of the fact because the mushal is that when you do this work, Hashem will 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 accept you and he'll la- laugh and smile with you, which means you're going to be able to experience the joy of the King. and he wants to add that what another quality. Of the fear and bittul and elul, lagabi ha'yirva bittul the Rosh Hashanah over and above the fear and bittul of Rosh Hashanah. He lo rak mitzad a chiddush of Okay, so the whole class so far we're talking about why that it's all its greatness is simply because it's a chiddush. It's a talking bird, and that itself is like a wondrous joy that the king has no other pleasure besides that. But actually, this concept of bittul ayesh and lower fear it has a whole nother like grade of greatness besides just the fact that it's a chiddush. And what is that? The dam in in habitul, the bitul itself, right? In other words, we were saying before that qualitatively it may be nothing. It may be like fake talk, right? It's 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 just as much as a bird can talk, which is basically qualitatively to a man, it's nothing. So too the bitul yesh compared to the bitul in the realms of atzilus, it's qualitatively nothing. But it's a chiddush. Now what we're saying is no. Even the quality of the bitul is actually higher. Then the quality of the bitul of atzilus, believe it or not, how can that? How can you explain that to me? Prove that to me. That's a crazy yeah. thing to say. The bitul shal de giloy, and the reason is, is because the bitul that comes due that that happens due to revelation, because you're in the state of experiencing godliness. Kevin shal bitul who mipnei shemakir umargish ha'iloy da giloy. Right? It's why are you in such a state of bitul? Why is the sphere of chokhmah like? Freaking out, saying "Einod milvado, Einod milvado, Einod milvado" all day long. It doesn't know how to say anything else, right? Because it recognizes and feels the quality of the revelation that's going into it. So the Rebbe puts into this italics here, or whoever printed it puts into italics that you recognize and feel the revelation. Who's recognizing and feeling? Person. Somebody. The the, the sphere of of chokhmavatzilus. But the very fact that the sphere of Chokhmat Silas is sitting there recognizing and, and, and feeling something means that there is actually quite a bit of a yesh in there. And the reason why he's so unbelievably bittal is because he, he, he perceives the awesomeness of what's taking place. Right? So being the sphere of Chokhmat Silas is probably not so bad. Again, like he doesn't have a sense of, of, of like exaggerated self, but his just quality of excellence is 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 um, is is beyond like speech beyond beyond the description, and it's so high that he can actually experience the orange self coming into him perpetually and feel that, right? And that's the reason why he's so bitter. Who's to say if Mr. Chochobatzilos would slap a body physical body on him, he would still come to shul in the morning? In other words, it's because he recognizes the greatness of God. Of course, he's going to be bitter, not just from a Chiddush perspective, but there's a certain sense of like self involved and 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 
in in his that, that he's bitul because he's recognizing the light. He realizes he realized the light is incomparable to him. And therefore, someone who's bitul because he's such a high highfalutin person, he's a kabbalist. Right, he's got a high soul, so you're gonna see him. And he's always perfect the whole day long, and everyone's gonna be bowing down to this guy's feet because he's such an amazing person. And Emmis, he is. It's not an arrogance, <laughs> but the idea is that he's bit. His bit was connected with his recognition of the matter. It's because he perceived, which means his metzias is fully there. Not necessarily in an, 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 an aspect of arrogance in any way, but just that his self is fully grand. To the point that he can even experience godliness, right? And so therefore, he that's not true bitu. A misis in a bitu who ba'avoda the Kabbalah soul. For example, this person doesn't have to have to have Kabbalah soul. Because Kabbalah soul is when you don't understand and you do it anyway. This guy can't have Kabbalah soul. Because he, he understands everything and he's going to do it because he understands it. And therefore, he never has to sort of like struggle and, 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 and put his nose to the grind, whatever it is. Right, what's the expression? Nose, nose to the grindstone? Yeah. He doesn't have to do it, right? Because his, he, he's, he's such a high-level person that he, there, there's no concealment where he is. And so therefore his Matthias, his sense of self, is like very, very strong and healthy. He never has to bend it and conform it. He can, he can stay in his state of, you know, basically comf- self-comfort. Because he's not in a state of concealment where he has to, like, so to speak, shut up and do it anyway, which is all of us, right? You don't feel it. And you'd rather be in Cancun having a nice beer in your hand on a warm, sandy beach. <laughs> Sounds good, right? So you have to be like, no, I'm going to do it anyway. That's a crazy bit, right? That's it. Not just because of a chiddish, because the act that you're performing of, like, pushing yourself to the side is tremendous. The, the chacham and the wise person doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to push himself to the side. He doesn't have to overcome with any passionate strength. He sees God. He's, he's, he's in. So, so the actual quality of the bitul, maybe not the quality of the guy. Still, he's a talking man and you're a talking bird. We're not talking about the quality of the God and the level of divine revelation. We're talking about the quality of the bitul. Your bitul is actually a seriously more significant thing to come up with than the bitul of, let's say, a tzaddik. Because it's kind of like a no-brainer for him in that sense. He experiences God, but he's not going to be bitul. That's his delight. It's not your delight. So when you have to do it, you're going against everything that makes sense to you. That that move of bitul is qualitatively, not just not just because it's a chiddush. It's qualitatively completely incomparable. So you see how special you are in a certain sense, right? You're every one of us is thinking, I want to be a tzaddik. I mean, unless you learned a little chassidus, but most people before they come into this room. I'm trying to be like, mamish, have all these spiritual experiences. And I, someone told me yesterday that they, they smelled the katoris of Hashem, like even though there was nothing was burning, right? There's all kinds of like levels upon levels. You want to like be that guy. Do you? Maybe it's better if you don't smell the katoris. Maybe it's better if you're just like sitting at these words trying to figure out what they mean, but doing it anyway. Because even though you're not experiencing that, you're giving Hashem the greatest delight. Maybe you got the delight from that. Hmm, was that frankincense? That's your business. That's your delight. Now Hashem's busy like, ah, you want my frankincense? I got thousands and thousands of cases of it. Here, take all you want. That's not what gets me going, says Hashem. It gets me going when you, when, when you don't smell anything. <laughs> right. In fact, you, you have to make sure you're, you're out of the way of the guy sitting next to you, maybe because you're not sure you can dive in front of him. Right. And yet you dive in and you put your head down, you crack your head on the words. That's mamish, a quality of bittel that even a tzaddik cannot give a chef. Right. And that's the bittel of Elul. When there's no revelations of Tishrei and Nashofar and all that good things, you're just stomp. It's just a regular weekday, and you're killing yourself like like there's no tomorrow because you're gonna you're you're gonna get there. So it's it, this is an incredible level of bitul. Shukamo Evit, you're like a slave. Shemitzat Ola Adon, merely because of the yoke of the master Shemuto love that's placed on you, you're forced to fulfill the will of God. So you are not very happy. Again, like for us, we're bummed about that experience, right? We want to feel it. I can't tell you how many times a day some bachrim come to me and say, Rabbi, like, what am I doing this for? I don't feel anything, right? I'm like, okay, let's open it again, right? <laughs> it's not about that. It's really not about that. There's a reason you don't feel anything. It's because Hashem loves you so much. He made you one of the lucky ones that doesn't feel anything. So you can serve him in a way that gives him the ultimate pleasure. 
the, those who feel, they're really playing a secondary role. They're the tzaddikim. And they're here for us. We're not here for them. They're here to encourage us because we're going to get to a point where we're like, I had enough. I don't feel anything. And they're like, no, it's going to be okay. Here's a miracle. You know, you get back in the game, right? But it, to me, it's not about the miracles. It's about like reminding us that there's miracles once in a while so that we keep our nose to the grindstone in the midst of our darkness. Zion. L'chaim, <laughs> l'chaim. <laughs> <laughs> According to this, we can understand what it says in the Mimer. Now going back to the Tzimaxetics peculiar statement, we can understand. Why is it that in order to get the Makif of Rosh Hashanah, this like infinite light was going to overtake us and bring us to a year of Elah, why is it that we can't just rely on Rosh Hashanah for that experience, but we have to go through the, the process of the lower fear and the bitla yesh and the, and the shofar of Elul, right? Because remember, if you remember, that's what we said, that we gain the Makif of Rosh Hashanah by the shofar of Elul, not by the shofar of Rosh Hashanah. Now we can understand why. Kizesh al-de'a this, that through the fear, that we're feared for, uh, fearful for, from, from Hashem's word, and that's kind of, that's kind of the bitl, which then draws down the makif, which we said was the house. What house can hold me? Right? How do you hold the level of Hashem called house, which we said was this level of makif light, which is like one size fits all, infinite, and doesn't take into, into account any spe- specifics of the creation. How do you get the house through bitl? Right, so we said the kli, you can't do it by a Torah mitzvahs. You can't do it with your holy kavanas or your mikvah and the arizal. Like nothing that you can accomplish will access that level of the makif except ani v'nakeruach v'charei al-dvarai. Unless you're poor and broken of spirit and fearing from Hashem's word. You need bitos, the only kli to get them. The, the more a person is lowly and, and in a state of humility, then you get a higher and higher and higher state of makif. So bringing back our point from a moment ago, right? Who's lowly? The guy who doesn't feel anything and he's, he's just and he's just doing it anyway. He like really doesn't, he can't pride himself on anything. What are you so excited about? Right? That is like true humility. If I'm sitting there like, and the secrets of Torah are flooding into my mind, I'm not lowly. I'm not in a lowly state. I'm actually pretty psyched about life right there. Right? So the fact is, if bitl and humility and humbleness is the only plea for the for the orange soul, then your being like bummed out about the fact that you experience nothing is really where you want to be. You're going to just serve Hashem despite the fact that you seemingly get nothing out of it. You're just you're like, you're humiliated over this. That's the plea to hold the makif. And you can't get your hands on that in Rosh Hashanah because there's too much revelation. You feel too much. <coughs> and that's why the main makif, that thing we're going for, you daf could draw it down in Elul. So I just want to point out that... Only if you like basically learn this mimer, right? Or at least try and fulfill the directives of what the Rebbe is saying, are you going to have a Rosh Hashanah at all? See, people who like miss out on Elul, Chas Shalom, they don't like really like realize that there is no such thing as Rosh Hashanah without Elul, right? We're, we're seeing right now that the whole thing you're shooting for Rosh Hashanah is something you can only get in Elul when there's no revelation, there's no light. Why are you, so to speak, bitl? Now, now we have to put the bitl, the, the year of Elah in quotations. It's so to speak, bitl. <laughs> Even though it's the higher bitl, it's not really a bitl. Because the reason that you're in a state of bitl over there is because you feel the revelation. It's Rosh Hashanah. It's awesome. We're going to pull up the shofar. Your heart is pounding. Your whole year is on the line. You can't get away from having like a, you, you, like, you, you do feel something in Rosh Hashanah, right? It's, it's, it's like a natural thing. You feel it. And if your bitl, because of a revelation, because the Hasidus is, 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 is enlightening your mind, because you're a tzaddik, that's not a bitl at the level of humility and lowness. That doesn't have the true quality of the bitl that we're talking about. The ikur in the ani When are you truly poor and broken of spirit? That's only a bitl of the type called shiflus, lowliness, not a bitl of, of like sort of being blown away and therefore like speechless because of the revelation. That's a bitl, but it's not the, it's not a high it's not a high level bitl. Therefore, 
This is the Yira and the Harada of Elul. Right? So, turning the page. Reish Samiches. What does it mean, this market? What does it mean, this, like, when it says market? Like, I'm a shech at the market. The Rosh Hashanah. <coughs> the Orient Sof, the infinite light that comes down on Rosh Hashanah. It's available on Rosh Hashanah, which negates the blemishes of this world. It's basically the perspective of Hashem yeah. before he created the world. So what does the world look like before Hashem created it? It's, it's in a state of like negated perfection. Like we were talking about before that you were asking me about yesterday, like yeah. the speech, but it's inside of the mind, yeah, yeah. right? Or, or you gave me another analogy over there, I forget from yesterday. It's like in a, the, the negated sense of the world, it doesn't have any schmutz on it. Flintstone. Yeah, when you have the fire inside the Flintstone, right? You cannot extinguish such a fire. If I have fire, when you strike a stone and fire comes out, the idea that he's referring to is that fire is also that that, that fire is also inside the stone, right? But it's it's in there in a way which, of exceeding concealment. It must be in there because if it came out, it didn't come out of thin air. It came out of the stone. But when it was in the stone, it was in a state of absolute nothingness. But it's also in a pristine state of perfection where it cannot be extinguished. So that's also this state of Makiv is like a perfect world. It's a world which is not in, it has no blemishes whatsoever. So if you're suddenly able to like summon that and bring it into this space, you you basically get forgiveness, right? Because it's, you, you you removed all the blemishes that could be. So that's what it means to draw down the Makiv of Rosh Hashanah. If that wasn't enough, one more explanation of the quality of Elul over Rosh Hashanah, the fear of Elul. Since one thing that we've sort of solidified, and this is what you were saying that I, I told you you're going to give us give away the end, is that after it comes, all, all this conversation sort of settles, what does it come out to? That since you don't feel anything, and you don't understand anything, and you're very lowly, and you're going to just put the yoke on yourself and do it anyway, it's really it's really an accomplishment of yours alone. Right? Hashem didn't really help you with this. He wanted to help you, he would have turned the lights on a little bit, right? And the fact that it came, comes from you alone without any aid from the higher revelations, that taps into the essence of the Jew himself. In other words, your, 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 your uniqueness, right? Is all of a sudden on display. And, and what's interesting about a Jew's uniqueness, I must say, is that it's actually more valuable then Atzilus, then Chochmah of Atzilus, then Kesser of Atzilus, then the Orin. So the Jew himself, Hashem, wouldn't even, right? It says, that, it, says, it says that a few things came before the creation of the world. One of them was the Jews and Torah. And then the question is asked, well, which ones over there was first? And it says the Jews came before the Torah. The Torah is called Torah Or. There's no, it's, it is a synonym of the light of the Orient So How do you know the Torah is only there after the Jews? Because in the Torah it says, Vida el b'nei Israel. So if the Torah is coming there and it's already referencing something else, it must be that that thing happened before it. Which means the source of the Jewish people themselves, just you, Stam, being a Yid, is actually on a, on a higher level in its essence than all the light that could possibly be. And since this month of Elul, it's spotlighting not the revelations which are which are which are inspiring you, but on the contrary, it's, it's removing all those revelations. It's putting the, the spotlight just on you. Your avoda is the is the only thing that's happening here because there's, you don't feel, you don't hear, see, or, or, or think anything, and therefore, this is through the avoda of Yisrael. That's what that's why we say ani ladodi, right? That's why the whole month of Elul starts with the word "I am to my beloved" because it's all about you. And the idea that the shores shall Yisrael who ba So where, if it doesn't come from Chokhmah or Atzilus or Kesser or the Orient Sov, where does the Jew come from if it precedes the Torah? It's one and united with the Atzmus of Hashem Himself. That the, the level called Atzmus, which is this rarefied thing that we only talk about when we like get to it by negating all these other levels, we finally can just think about this thing called Atzmus. That's where the Jews, the Jew actually comes from. And therefore, not only are you getting makifim drawn to you by this level of bitul, but you access the highest levels of divinity that it could possibly exist with Hashem Himself. You draw down the atzmus through this level of work, ani ladodi. 
And this is the inner secret reason why my yira tata de elo baim achakach berosh hashanah liyira, and that's really why. It, from the lower fear of Elul, you eventually get to the higher fear of Rosh Hashanah. In other words, it's we're flipping this thing entirely on its head. So what's happening is you're thinking you're going to start with the lower one, and then you'll work yourself up to the higher one, which is Rosh Hashanah. What he's saying now, we've already just established that the lower one is really the higher one, because the fear in Elul, is much more qualitatively pleasing for Hashem. And now we've gone to the point that it actually brings out Hashem's essence, the very essence of Hashem. And so he's saying that now that you've got the essence of Hashem and Elul, of course you're going to have Yira Ilah and a revelation of the Orient Sov in Rosh Hashanah because that's just a reflection of the essence. In other words, Rosh Hashanah is merely the light which shines from the essence. And that's the real, it's not that you've gone, you've climbed your way up the ladder to get to the Yira Ilah. In Elul, you brought down the essence. It's way higher than the Yira, than the, than the Yira Ilah. And therefore, since you have the essence, oh, so once I have the essence, then, then let the essence shine. And what Rosh Hashanah really is, is just a, a mere response and a reflection of what you did in Elul. Now you have the essence, it comes out and shows itself on Rosh Hashanah. So the, the whole, this whole higher levels of the Yira Ilah we're talking about is not the result of your... Of, 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 of like getting higher from what the, the work you did in Elul, it's actually a step down. It's like now that I have the essence, I can come and the essence can ex- express itself and shine, and then you experience all this light. It's a crazy idea. Like I said yesterday, he said yesterday, now, today, this is the... Like, so, 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 so. Mashiach now. Yes. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs>